show that if a, b, x, and y are elements of the real numbers, and a is strictly less than x, and x is strictly less than b, and a is strictly less than y, where and y is strictly less than b, then the absolute value of y minus x is strictly less than b minus a. So let's first draw a picture of what this is to kind of get a, a firmer grip of what they're what they're kind of asking. Um, and so I'm going to draw the real number line where the real numbers are increasing to the as we go to the right. And here, if a is right here, then that means that since b is strictly greater than a, since b is strictly greater than x, which is strictly greater than a, so we know for sure that b is strictly greater than a, then b will be over here to the right of a. And then since x is strictly less than b and x is strictly greater than a, then x is somewhere in, in between a and b. And same with y. And we don't know, I, I, will, I will say that we don't know that x is strictly less than y, or vice versa, we don't know that y is strictly less than x. Um, but what we do know for sure, what we do know for sure is that they're in between a and b. We know that for sure. And I'm going to talk about what this is saying here. What is this saying? This, this is saying, and I'm going to borrow from the future a little bit here because we haven't really talked about a notion of distance. We will talk about that when we get to metric spaces. But what this is saying here, again, if I borrow from the future, that the distance between A and B, the distance between A and B is strictly greater than the distance between X and Y. And that kind of gives us an intuitive sense of what this, this problem is asking us. But let's prove this in a rigorous way. We're practicing our careful proof writing, so let's do that. So first, let's dissect again what this conclusion is saying. If the absolute value of y minus x is strictly less than b minus a, let's rewrite this in a little bit more accessible way. If we write this in a more accessible way, then the absolute, this statement right here, the absolute value of y minus x being strictly less than b minus a, that's equivalent to y minus x being strictly less than b minus a and x minus y being strictly less than b minus a. And I encourage you not to take this statement for granted. And in fact, I proved this in another video that I'll link up here to the right, uh, the top right corner. But again, don't take this statement for granted, but, but for the purposes of this video, take my word for it that this is true. So if the absolute value of y minus x is strictly less than b minus a, if that's the same thing as saying that this right here, then let's rewrite our problem in our more accessible, re rewritten way. So if we want to show, show, if a, b, x, and y are elements of the real numbers, and a is strictly less than x, which is strictly less than b, and a is strictly less than y, which is strictly less than b, then, then, and I'm gonna rewrite this in a different color, then, y, oops, excuse me, I'll write this in this yellow color here, y minus x is strictly less than b minus a, and x minus y is strictly less than b minus a. So now we've broken this down, we've dissected this into a little bit more accessible problem. So let's do that, so let's, let's split this up into two parts. Part one, where we show that y minus x is less than b minus a, given these hypotheses, and Part two, part two, where we show that x minus y is strictly less than b minus a, given these hypotheses. So let's let's start with part one. And now, in part one, we're going to dissect, as we will do in part two as well, we're going to dissect the this hypothesis here, that a is strictly less than x, and x is strictly less than b, and a is strictly less than y, and y is strictly less than b. So, we have that a is strictly less than x, which is strictly less than b, and a is strictly less than y, which is strictly less than b. And that's the same thing as saying in a longhand, more long-winded way that a is strictly less than x and x is strictly less than b. And same thing here, a is strictly less than y and y is strictly less than b. And I'm gonna remind us of, a, of something here. I'm gonna remind us of something that remember, 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 if, if x is less than y, strictly less than y, then this is equivalent to saying, this is equivalent to saying, so I, I shouldn't actually say the if, 
there. So x being strictly less than y, that's equivalent to x is strictly less than y if and only if, another way of saying equivalent to is if and only if, y minus x is an element of the real numbers. The positive real numbers, that's an important part. y minus x is an element of the positive real numbers. And again, I encourage you not to take this statement for granted. And again, in fact, I prove this in a separate video that I will link up here in the top right. But this statement, we, we you could prove this statement, you know, back in seventh grade, where where we subtract both x or x x's to both sides, so subtract minus x and minus x, so that gives us zero is strictly less than y minus x. But we're not in seventh grade, and we 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 we're more mature mathematicians now, and we're we're ready to prove this in a little bit more rigorous way. Although you may be in seventh grade, and that's certainly fine, and um, I encourage you to try to be rigorous with yourself and, and for fun and try to prove this in a way that's different from this, in a way that, that is um, using more rigor and careful, carefulness. So, but yes, this is, this is how we, another way we might think of this, just to convince ourselves for now. And so as to not interrupt the flow of the video, I've, again, I've improved, proved this in a separate video. So, so y minus x is in the real numbers. So, if, if, a, if A is strictly less than X, then that implies that X minus A, X minus A, is in the positive real numbers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewrite X minus A in a kind of strange way, but you'll see why I do it in a little bit. But X minus A, X minus A, that's equal to X minus, or excuse me, x plus negative a, and that's equal to negative a plus x, and going from, going from here, going from here to here, that's by the definition of subtraction, and going from here to here, that's because of the commutative, commutativity of addition, so negative a plus x, or here, or, or negative a plus x, and then that's the same as negative a plus negative negative x and i encourage you to think about why this is true um i mean of course it, it's obvious if, again if we if we prove this in a uh kind of uh naive way where we were just using our seventh and eighth grade knowledge uh, or algebra one and algebra two knowledge but i but i encourage you to think about why this is true a little bit more rigorously but so ne um let's let's move on here so negative a plus negative negative x and that's the same as, by the definition of subtraction, negative a minus negative x. And again, look at this. We can use this red, well, this property that I've highlighted here in red, we can use this property again to say the following. We can use this property here to say the following. That means if negative, if x minus a, if x minus a, excuse me, if x minus a is in the real numbers, and since x minus a is equal to negative a minus negative x, so that, that implies that negative a minus negative x is also in the positive real numbers. So that means, by this property in red here, that negative a is strictly greater than negative x. So, I have here, what I have, what we have so far is negative a is strictly greater than negative x. And we also have, we also have that y is strictly less than b. Or another way of saying that is b is greater than y, strictly greater than y. y is strictly less than b, another way of saying that is b is strictly greater than y. And now, I'm going to write another property that we want to remember in red. And again, as to not interrupt the flow of this video, video, I will prove this in a separate video that I will link again in this top right corner. So remember, negative a, so, or excuse me, I, I'm going to talk about a remember first. So our remember is that if, if we have some a, and so a, b, c, and d are all in the real numbers. So if we have some a that's greater than b, 
and we have some c that's greater than or equal to d, then this implies that a plus c, <clears throat> a plus c, is strictly greater than b plus d. So again, don't take this property for granted. I encourage you to to, to um, watch this video that I've linked to the top right um, to see why this is true. But take my word for it now that this is true. So we have that if a is strictly greater than b and c is greater than or equal to d, then a plus c is strictly greater than b plus d. And so look at what we have here. Look at what we have in yellow. If we have negative a is strictly greater than negative x, and we also have that b is strictly greater than y. So we can use it, we can leverage this property in red to say the following, that negative a plus b is strictly greater than negative x plus y. I know that we didn't have a, this b wasn't a greater than or equal to, but that's okay because this, this property in red here is saying that for any c greater than or equal to d, so for any c greater than d, or also for any c equal to d, that this implication holds as long as a is also strictly greater than b. So we can say, we, we're allowed to say that negative a plus b, we're allowed to use this property even though that this is not, this isn't a greater than or equal to sign, even though this is a gr strictly greater than sign. So, um, because this property holds for c strictly greater than d or c greater than or equal to d, or even c equal to d. So, um, so moving on here, so with this, we can rewrite this, and I think you might see where I'm going with this. We can rewrite this as b plus negative a is strictly greater than y plus negative x, because addition is commutative, and that's the same as b minus a is strictly greater than y minus x, and flip, um, this is the same as saying, this is the same as saying that y minus x is strictly less than b minus a. And look at this, we've just proven part one. We've just proven part one where we show that y minus x is strictly less than b minus a. We've just proven part one, and let's clear the board to prove part two, and it's gonna be done in a very, very similar way. We're gonna prove part, part two here in a very similar way. So part two, part two, let's remind ourselves what part two said. Part two said we wanna show that x minus y is strictly less than b minus a. So we have that a minus is strictly less than x, which is strictly less than b, and a is strictly less than y, which is strictly less than b. So, so let's look at a is strictly less than y. Again, by our, by, before we cleared the board, that property, there was a property in red that stated the following. If a is strictly less than y, then that implies that y minus a, that y minus a is in the positive real numbers. And let's rewrite this in a, in a kind of non-intuitive way. That if we do the same thing that we did before, this is the same as saying that negative a, negative a minus negative y, negative a minus negative y is in the positive real numbers. Because as we talked about in a very similar way that we talked about previously, this is equal to y minus a, and since y minus a is in the positive real numbers, then negative a minus negative y is also in the positive real numbers because they're equal. y minus a is equal to negative a minus negative y. So, if we if we know this this is true, this is true, and by the uh, another property where if x is strictly greater than y, then that implies that y minus x is in or this is not only a implication, but this is a double implication. That is to say that this is an if and only if statement. That means that y minus x, y, or excuse me, excuse me, x minus y, this is a double implication here. That means that x minus y is in the positive real numbers. It's in the positive real numbers. So if negative a minus negative y is in, and I'm going to say just recall here, recall, recall the statement, recall the statement. And so if negative a minus negative y is in the positive real numbers, then that means that negative a is strictly greater than negative y. And look at what we have here. We also have that x, we have that x 
x is strictly less than b. And again, remember that property that we talked about where if a is strictly greater than b and c is strictly greater than d, greater than or equal to d, then a plus c is strictly greater than b plus d. So we can use that same thing. We can use that same thing. We can use this same thing that we did before. So negative a plus b is strictly greater than x plus negative y. And look at this. Look at this. This is the same thing as saying that x plus negative y is strictly less than negative a plus b. And switching the order, because addition is commutative, x plus negative y is strictly less than b plus negative a. And by the definition of subtraction, we have x minus y is strictly less than b minus a. And look at this. We've just proven part two. We've just proven part two where we've shown that x minus y is strictly less than b minus a. x minus y is strictly less than b minus a. And we're done. We've shown both parts. We've shown an equivalent statement to the absolute value of y minus x is strictly less than b minus a. And the equivalent statement was that x minus y is strictly less than b minus a and y minus x is strictly less than b minus a. And we're finished.